Ever since I started this little Godzilla video game review show, I've been getting one game request more than any other. The California Raisins, The Great Escape. On the Nintendo Entertainment- No, it's the Pipeworks trilogy of Godzilla fighting games, from the 2000s! What can I even say that you don't already know? Of course these are awesome games, you think I'm here to debate that? They're objectively entertaining, even if you're not a big Godzilla fan. I'm not exactly breaking new ground here making a video about the first game in the trilogy, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. I've got no hot takes, no new insight, absolutely nothing to add to the conversation. And yet... <laughs> Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee is the first in this trilogy of Godzilla fighting games developed by Pipeworks and published by Atari. It debuted on GameCube in America in October 2002, and then an Xbox version dropped in April of 2003. For this video, you're going to be seeing gameplay from the Xbox version, which is regarded as the better version. It came later and has a huge list of additional features, such as new arenas and new multiplayer modes, and it has Mechagodzilla 3, who's absent from the North American GameCube release. Not counting games connected to the TriStar movie, this was the first console Godzilla game released in America since... Super Godzilla 10 years earlier? I mean, Battle Legends just barely made it out. The point is, this is the first big Godzilla game in a while. The fact that it was a 3D fighting game with 12 playable monsters was mind-blowing. And here's our introduction, an epic little video showing our lineup. Before you even hit start, you know this is gonna be different. This ain't Monster of Monsters, Super Godzilla left in the dust. Attention, inhabitants of the planet you call Earth. We are the Vortac. The game's overall plot is straightforward. An alien race known as the Vortac plan to take over the Earth and take control of its monsters on Monster Island. Looking at Godzilla's history, it feels like every race in the universe has the technology to control our monsters, except us humans. That is all. Am I still on? Oh. Uh, well, we now return you to... whatever it was you were doing. Idiots. The whole thing does evoke the B-movie aspects of the Showa era of Godzilla movies, but at the same time, it's way sillier. This game isn't taking itself too seriously, but it's also found itself in a new world of self-awareness and parody that felt new for a Godzilla video game. And I could see why they needed to go with this tone, because things the monsters can do in this game are fucking absurd! At this point in time, I'd never seen Anguirus roll around like Sonic the Hedgehog. I'd never seen this. Or that. That never happened in a Godzilla movie, what the hell? I think in hindsight, we forget how new these interpretations were in 2002, but they were somewhat necessary. If the game stuck with more traditional monster physics, fights might feel, well, more like the fights in Godzilla on PS4. Slower, lumbering, movie accurate, but lacking the playful energy. So the Pipeworks games broke a lot of the rules that were established at this point. Things move fast, they lean into the absurdities, they laugh at the face of physics. Honestly, the closest Godzilla movie I can think of that matches this vibe is Final Wars, which came out afterwards in 2004. All of this is to say that when Destroy All Monsters Melee first dropped, it threw a lot of new ideas and interpretations at us. Yet it did so while remaining true to the spirit of Godzilla and these monsters. The graphics work, the monster models look great. These review videos aren't so fun when I'm not just roasting the game, huh? Anyway, let's just do a really quick overview of the game itself, just the surface level stuff. There are gameplay modes like Versus, where you can fight your friends, Adventure, which is the story mode, Survival, where your health bar barely replenishes between matches, Melee, where up to four players can fight each other, Team Battle, where those players can divide into teams, and Destruction Mode, where you wreck as much as you can. There's also a gallery where you can check out the things you've unlocked in those other modes. When playing through the story mode, you start with four monsters, 1990's Godzilla, Megalon, Anguirus, and Gigan. The rest will have to be unlocked through various means. Or through a cheat code that unlocks them all. It's your world, boss. 
And this adds the stun. Oh yeah! Godzilla 2000, King Ghidorah, Mecha King Ghidorah, Mecha Godzilla, another Mecha Godzilla, Orga, and Rodan. What a lineup! And don't tell me the next game's lineup was better. We're in 2002, 2003 right now. We're not up to the next game. It didn't come out yet. When this game dropped, Godzilla 2000 was only a few years old. It was crazy that you got to play as him, or Orga. At the same time, I remember being excited that the Staroya was making his video game debut. Hidora and Mothra both appear, but are unplayable, but it was exciting to see them. There are many locations to host fights, Monster Island, London, LA, Osaka, San Francisco, Seattle, Tokyo, and the Xbox exclusive areas like the Vortac Homeworld. And if you make it toward the end of the story mode, the Vortac aliens will teleport you to their mothership to face their ultimate weapon, Mechagodzilla. Unless you're playing as Mechagodzilla, in which case you face Mecha King Ghidorah. If you win this fight, you get sent back to Earth and the Vortac retreat with the old, but we'll be back! But we will return, Earthlings. We will return. On to the multiplayer modes. Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee was the first Godzilla video game to allow for up to four players at once. And whether you're playing one against one or four player melee, what elevates this game to the top of the pile is its multiplayer features, again on the Xbox version. This game was born for Godzilla fan couch co-op and it still scratches all those itches to this day. Controls are pretty intuitive. This is an easy pick up and play game and it wouldn't take a noob long to get a handle of these controls. This makes the game so inviting to play with a friend. This is the game that built a community. Four and a half stars. This Royal Monsters Melee is still a blast today. It's why the game has such a legacy with attempts made to revive it. Everything you loved about it years ago is still there. It doesn't get old. I didn't have a GameCube or an Xbox when this first came out, so my first time playing this game came way later. I had a PlayStation 2, so I had to wait for the next game in the trilogy, Godzilla Save the Earth. But that's a story for another video. The Destroy All Monsters Melee brand consisted of more than just this game. There were two versions of the Game Boy Advance companion game, Domination, both of which we've already covered on this show, and both very excellent Godzilla games. Tell me your memories of Destroy All Monsters Melee below, and like the video, subscribe to the channel, it does really help. Until next time.